Hi, my name is Sergeant First Class Bill Elliott. In this segment, we are going to explore the triangle, tambourine, bass drum, crash cymbals, suspended cymbal, and bass drum cymbal attachment. When I was in junior high and high school, most of the percussion parts were what I call boom chick or oom pa. The bass drum and cymbals typically played on one and three, and the snare drum played on two and four. Now, composers and arrangers write challenging percussion parts from the elementary through the college levels, utilizing many of the techniques we will discuss. Let's briefly talk about the description and selection of the triangle. The first thing we need is the proper equipment. A good triangle clip is made of metal or wood and should easily clip to a music stand. It should be strung with two loops of a thin cord, preferably nylon. Thicker materials tend to dampen the overtones. I use two loops so one can act as a backup if the other breaks. For triangle beaters, you should have a selection that vary in size. The same holds true for triangles, because they measure anywhere from 3 to 9 inches in size. Although the average triangle measures 6 to 8 inches, you can see that there are many different sizes which vary in sound. The key word here is sound. What determines the sound that you ultimately pick? It could be your personal preference, the conductor's preference, or simply the demands of your music. In the early stages of a student's development, he or she will need some guidance in selecting the proper instrument for the music. For example, most students will pick a small triangle for soft passages and a larger triangle for louder passages. Dynamics should not be the determining factor in the selection of your instrument. You can play a larger triangle just as softly as a smaller one. So my question to you is, what is the difference in their sounds? The smaller triangle gives you a brighter sound, not necessarily a softer sound, and a larger triangle gives you a darker sound, not necessarily a louder sound. So what determines your sound? I think it's the brightness or darkness of sound that you want. How do we hold the triangle? Allow your thumb and first finger of your hand to form the shape of a C. The clip should then drop into the C and rest on top. Now that we have the triangle suspended, let's discuss playing areas and techniques for slow to moderate rhythmic passages. Make sure you hold the triangle beater at a 45 degree angle for maximum overtones. 
For maximum resonance and fullness in sound, strike the triangle on the inside of the bass near the closed in. Or on the outside near the bottom. Or the top. In my travels with the Army Field Band, I have found that not every school can afford to have a selection of triangles. However, even with one triangle, you have a selection of more than one sound. Here, listen as I strike the triangle on the close side near the top. Now listen to the inside of the bass near the closed in. Can you hear the difference? Listen again. Which sound is darker? If you said the inside of the bass near the end, you are correct. It does give you a darker sound. The outside near the top gives you a brighter sound. Now let's take a look at two techniques for faster rhythmic passages. The first is a legato technique in which we play the triangle with one beater. We do so by placing the beater inside the triangle and moving it back and forth between the two sides. Remember to keep the beater at a 45 degree angle whenever you play. This is possible when you play between the bass and the close side of the triangle, which gives you the fullest sound possible. If you use the top of the triangle closest to the clip, it is difficult to play using a 45 degree angle. Therefore, you sacrifice a full sound for a thinner sound. Here is an exercise to help you practice this technique. Notice that the sticking I used for the exercise is consistent, like the straight system of sticking that we utilize for the snare drum. All of the ones and the ands should be on one side while the e's and the uhs are the other side. Remember we do this for a consistent sound and stable rhythm. That particular technique works well, but it has its faults. Although it allows us to keep the instrument up, it's not as stable as suspending the triangle from two clips with the closed side on the top and playing with a pair of matched beaters. Remember, what looks good doesn't always sound good, and what sounds good doesn't always look good. Having the triangle suspended from two clips playing on the closed side, or suspending the triangle from one clip playing on the bass, or on opposite sides at the top with a pair of matched beaters is the most stable way of articulating fast rhythmic passages. To practice these techniques, let's utilize the same exercise as before, but play all the ones and the ands with the right hand and all the e's and the uhs with the left hand. Having the triangle suspended with one or two clips is the most reliable method for playing grace notes. This time I will suspend the triangle from one clip and play on its base with two match beaters like this. Remember, all grace note figures should be played utilizing single strokes.